Hi guys, great to have you. My name is Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Singularity. Now I have some interesting, interesting news today about GM Wuling, who keep topping the sales charts for electric cars in China. Haven't heard of the car? Well, you should, because this car is going to sell like crazy. And I mean, guys, I don't mean it's going to sell like crazy as in it's going to sell 50,000, it's going to sell 100,000. I mean, this car is going to sell millions worldwide. Millions worldwide. I guarantee it. You can book that, right? You can book that because you know what the world needs? How many people in the world can afford a car that costs $50,000? How many people can afford a car that costs $40,000? How many people can even afford a car that costs $25,000? Well, there's still probably three and a half billion people that can't afford a $25,000 car. So what about those other three and a half billion people? What are they going to buy? They're going to buy this. The electric car sales of the Chinese manufacturers BYD, NIO and Xpeng increased significantly in April. The GM Wuling Hongwan Mini EV continues to see higher sales than any other electric car in China, while Tesla reported somewhat confusing figures for April. I'll tell you why they're confusing in a minute. In April, the joint venture GM Wuling sold more units than any other electric car maker in China, mainly because of one single model. Last month, 26,000 units of the Hongwan Mini EV were sold. By comparison, the Tesla Model 3 and BYD Han BEV models only achieved 6,264 and 5,746 sales respectively. Now, those sales figures are false because the reason Tesla sold those is not because they had that many orders. They had a lot more orders than that. I guarantee it. It's because they sent a huge shipment of vehicles at the beginning of that month to Europe. They simply couldn't manufacture enough to meet demand, and they won't be able to manufacture enough cars to meet demand for several years to come, at least. The Chinese Passenger Car Association, CPCA, initially reported 25,845 Model 3 and Model Y sales in China and 14,174 exported vehicles. This would have meant a very good month with a cumulative 40,000 vehicles. Later, however, the CPCA and Tesla China confirmed that the 25,845 vehicles already included the exported units. So Tesla sold only 11,671 Model 3 and Model Y. The majority of the vehicles built in April were exported. The majority of the vehicle, vehicles built in April were exported. Like I said, they have people who have ordered these cars in Europe and have been waiting for months. So that was Tesla's first priority. As you know, Tesla is currently expanding into even more markets in Europe, including Romania and Hungary. And these other markets, many other countries need cars and people have been waiting for a long time. So Tesla obviously has to prioritize which order they send which cars where. In addition, as some Twitter users write with reference on Tesla's Chinese PR department, the production line for the Model Y has been shut down for a fortnight. No reasons have been given yet, but I would suggest to you it's because of upgrades to the line. The interruption in production could either be related to expansions or adjustments to the production line or to a lack of parts potentially, such as the semiconductors that are currently in particularly high demand. However, this information hasn't yet been confirmed. Guys, I would suggest to you that it's nothing to do with semiconductors as Tesla doesn't seem to have had really any problems in the past with supplying those to their cars. But I think the most likely scenario is Tesla could be introducing potentially new gigapresses for Model Y and they're, they're trying to kind of move those into the production line. Anyway, the temporary production stop of the Model Y partly explains Tesla's weak China sales. The Model Y is still in demand, well, while part of the production of the Model 3 is already exported. Obviously, there is huge demand globally for Model Y and nowhere near enough cars to satisfy that demand. The decline at Tesla in March, there were still 18,319 vehicles, ensures that in April, BYD is not only ahead of Tesla in total sales of new energy vehicles in China, we're referring to now, but also only in the comparison of battery electric vehicles, BYD sold 16,114 BEVs in April. That's plus 62% compared to April 2020, but 1.1% less than in March. 
In addition, there were 8,920 plug-in hybrids, plus 288% year-on-year, plus 26% month-on-month, thus leading to NEV sales of 25,662 vehicles. This is 97.5% more than in April 2020 and 6% more than in March 2021. Now, my suggestion to you guys is to buy BYD stock. I believe it's massively undervalued. Part of the reason for that is I believe BYD is about to expand globally. When I say expand globally, they've already, they have already expanded globally with various different vehicles like buses and trucks, but they yet to do so with cars. Now, they're coming to Australia this year, New Zealand, the UK, and Norway. Next year, look out the rest of the world. Positive numbers have also been reported by the two startups, Neo and Xpeng. Neo delivered exactly 7,102 electric cars in April, 125.1% more than in the same month last year. Although Neo says it also affected, it was also affected by the chip shortage, it was able to deliver more than 7,000 vehicles in one month for the third time this year. Only in February was the mark not reached. Most of the sales, 5,579 units, were of the smaller SUV models ES6 and EC6. The larger ES8 came to 1,523 deliveries. Now that sounds like a low number, guys. But remember that Neo make premium cars. They're more expensive than their other than other Chinese car manufacturers. They're probably more in the price range of say Mercedes. So at this point, they don't quite have the market share in the premium segment but I believe that that is increasing and I believe they're going to gain more and more market share as the year goes on. Now, competitor Xpeng delivered 5,147 electric cars in April, an increase of 285% compared to the same month last year. Year to date, Xpeng has thus delivered 18,500 vehicles, up 413% on the first four months of 2020. April also included the first deliveries of the P7 Wing Edition with gold wing doors and the G3 with lithium phosphate batteries. Xpeng does not have detailed figures on this, only the overall split between the two ranges. There were 3,000 P7s and 2,152 G3s in May. The first seven, the first P7s with LFP batteries will be delivered. Now, getting back to the General Motors brand Wuling and the Huan. It's been selling 1,000 units per day for the last 270 days. Now we have new figures out of China giving that that data and a new Cabrio version of the Hongwang Mini EV debuted two weeks ago now at the Shanghai Motor Show, but it is the previous generation that is busting the EV sales records. The Hongwang Mini EV caught attention in January when it took the title of best-selling EV off the Tesla Model 3 in what was barely at the time the world's largest EV market. While China's EV market has since been overtaken by Europe, sales there are still roaring along at a very fast pace. Now, as I mentioned before, they've sold 270,000 of these in the last 270 days. And this is not a vehicle that's well known. However, obviously, they are selling on price. So, the Hongwang Mini EV is currently only sold in China, but the company hopes to expand sales overseas eventually. That is, as soon as they can even make enough cars to satisfy the demand they have in China, which could take quite a while, I believe. Wuling has not announced which countries could get the Hongwang Mini EV first or next, though some of Chinese, China's electric automakers are looking to expand into the European market. Specifically, as we mentioned on this channel, you can see that I've got a range of videos about those companies and what their plans are over the next 12 months. The car debuted in China in July 2020, and it is manufactured under a joint venture between Wuling, Chinese state owned automaker SAIC Motor, and General Motors. So it's got two huge players backing behind it. One reason for the Hongwang Mini EV's popularity among Chinese consumers is the car's extremely low price tag. The car sells for less than 5,000 US dollars, 
while the Model 3 has a starting price of around 36,000 US dollars in China. For that lower price, drivers are definitely getting much less car overall, as the very compact Hongwang Mini EV measures just under 115 inches in length and almost 59 inches in width compared to 185 inches by 73 inches for the Model 3. It's about half the size of a Model 3, which is probably extremely practical for many people living in cities where there's very little parking space. Wuling's electric hatchback seats just four passengers at a very tight squeeze and offers no trunk space at all. Though the rear seats do fold down to create storage space, the Model 5 3 seats 5 people and has 15 cubic feet of cargo space for comparison's purposes. Now, the car's manufacturers pitch its dimensions as a positive, as in fact a selling point, and they said this through a press release. They noted that the car is ideal for urban commuting and parking it in tight spaces. And they've got a damn good point. Look at the size of it. You could fit two of those in the average car park, car spot in the Western world, and probably in many car spaces also in China and Asia as well. Now, the Hongwang Mini EV is certainly being pitched to city drivers who might be less likely to need to drive a long distance. The car's battery allows drivers to travel up to 105 miles on a single charge while reaching a top speed of about 100 kilometers an hour or about 62 miles per hour. Now, obviously, you're not likely to get that range not likely to get 105 miles of range, you probably get more like 105 kilometers of range. But let's look at the numbers. 95% of people living in the Western world travel less than that per day. 95%. In the Western world, imagine the number of people living in cities that travel significantly less than that per day. The number would be literally in the hundreds of millions, if not billions. Now, by comparison though, to the Tesla Model 3, that has a top speed of 162 miles per hour and a range of more than 350 miles per battery charge, while the upcoming Lucid Air is expected to set records with a range of 517 miles, but we're yet to see that car actually come into production. Now, Tesla doubled its sales in China in 2020 to nearly 6.7 billion, while ramping up production at the company's Shanghai factory, though China's military recently ban banned Tesla cars from entering its complexes due to security concerns over the vehicle's cameras. Now, obviously, I think you'll find that every military complex in the world would ban automakers' cars from other countries from entering in their military complexes. That's pretty much per the status pro quo and nothing out of the ordinary. However, in the second half of 2020, Wuling sold more than 112,000 units of the car, which ranked second worldwide in the, electrical, in the electric vehicle market behind only Tesla, which delivered more than 285,000 Model 3 and Model Y cars combined in the second half. Guys, my prediction is that in 2023, that we'll see at least 1 million sales of this car. And I believe SAIC and GM are ramping up to significantly increase the number of deliveries and then to start importing this vehicle worldwide, which is incredibly good news for countries like Africa. Hopefully it goes there eventually. Southeast Asia, and many other poor countries in Central and South America. There's a Eastern Europe. There's so many people in the world that would benefit enormously from having a low-cost EV like this. And I really am stoked and excited that GM and SAIC Motors have combined to make this car. It really is a people's car. Guys, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate your support. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.